In the final part of this section, you will bring the web app together by using WebSockets in Node.js to communicate comments between the web pages that are open if they're not deemed to be spam. But what are WebSockets? Well, essentially, a WebSocket enables two-way communication between client and server in real time instead of using archaic REST-based APIs, which are not terribly efficient as a persistent communications channel. With a WebSocket, a client can send a message to the server, and the server can relay and push that message to other connected clients in a very fast manner, as the connection remains open for the duration of the session, so data can be both sent and received efficiently. In order to communicate data between users who have your index.html page open in their browser, you'll use socket.io, which is a very popular Node.js WebSocket library and can be set up in just a few lines of code. Here, you can see how client one may send a comment message to the server with some data contained within it after determining it was not a spam comment. The server then receives the data and calls the event handler for this comment event type. In this case, the server's job is to broadcast the received comment message to all the other connected clients so they can get a copy of the comment and render it to their user interfaces for the users to see. All right, so how do you install socket.io for Node.js? Well, First, open the package.json file in your Glitch project and add socket.io to your dependencies as shown. Here, you request the version of socket.io to be at least version 4.0.1, and note you need to add a comma on the line before as this is contained within an object. Glitch will then rebuild the backend server to install socket.io for you, which you can then use immediately. At this point, it's time to update your Node.js server-side code in server.js. Go ahead and open the up first. First, import the HTTP library as shown using node's require statement. Next, add a line to create a new HTTP server with the express app that you already defined above. Now you can require socket.io that you just installed earlier on and then make sure it uses the HTTP server that you created. This allows socket.io to expose the correct client-side socket.io library that you use later on in your index.html file. Moving past the next few lines of code that were already defined, you can now add some socket.io code to handle a client connecting to this server. Here, you can essentially add a special event listener for a connection event using io.onConnect, which will then call an anonymous function when such an event occurs that will be passed for socket connection for the client that connected as a parameter. When a client connects, you can first log this event to the server logs to show that a client connected using console.log as shown. Note that this console.log will not print to your browser's console. This is on the server-side logs somewhere in the cloud. On Glitch, there's a special logs button that you can click on to see the server-side logs if you wish. Next, you can add a comment message listener to the socket that connected using socket.onComment. In socket.io, you can send custom message types. Here, I use the string of comment to indicate a comment event. Later on, on your client-side code, you'll send a message with the same type so it gets picked up by this listener. It should be noted that any event that's detected will have some data associated with it. Typically, this is just a regular JSON object that socket.io automatically passes and converts to a usable JavaScript object of the same form. So when a comment event is sent to this socket connection, it will call an anonymous function with one parameter containing the data in the message that was sent. Finally, here you can call socket.broadcast.emit with the first parameter of remote content, and then the second parameter is the data object you just received. Essentially, this will tell socket.io to relay the data using a custom event called remote comment to any other sockets that are connected to the server. The rest of the code below for this server listen in this file has not changed. Okay, now that socket.io is set up on the server side, the next thing to do is to import the new socket.io library to your front end code. For this, you'll edit index.html, so go ahead and open that up. In the body of your index.html file, add a new script import near the end of the file, but just before the script import as shown on this slide. Socket.io will serve its own client-side library files on the express server you just edited for convenience at the URL shown. Great, you're almost there. Now you just need to head back to script.js to send and receive socket events to and from the server. Let's do that now. The following code will be added to the very end of the code already in script.js. Okay, so first off, kick off a request to connect to the WebSocket server by calling io.connect. This will return a reference to the open socket connection to the Node.js server you just created previously, which is called socket in this code. Next, create a function named handle remote comments that will take one parameter called data. 
this function will be called whenever you receive data from the Node.js server. This data object will contain an object with all the data needed to recreate a comment that was posted. Then just like you did before, you can create a new list item and append it to a paragraph containing the sent data's comment text. You then add a span tag with a class of username containing the username of the commenter and another span tag containing the timestamp when the comment was posted. You can then prepend this list item to the existing page's comments list as you've done before. Finally here, you add a special event listener for socket IO events that are the name remote comment, which when received will call the handle remote comments function above with the data received. Note that this event name is the same as what you defined in server.js earlier on, which is what the server broadcasts to connected clients when relaying received messages. All right, just one more step to go and then you can try it all out. All you need to do now is to actually send a comment to the server to broadcast to other users if it's not spam. Let's do that now. Head back to your already defined load and predict function and add an else statement when you are checking if the comment was greater than some spam threshold. In the case the comment is not spam, you then want to send the comment to other users who have the web page open. Let's dive into that. Here, you can call socket.emit with a custom event name of comment that you know your server is listening for as the first parameter. The second parameter is just an object with the data you want to send. Finally, you can specify properties of username, timestamp, and comment, and grab the values for each of them from the current DOM comment that was passed to this function. This object will then be broadcast to any other clients connected to the server, which will then use the handle remote comments function you defined previously to render this data object on remote users' computers. And with that, your project is now ready to test. If you open two live previews of your project in separate windows, or even on different devices if you have one, as shown on this slide, and then start typing comments, any comment that is not spam will appear on all the other windows and devices. If a comment is marked as spam, it will not appear on the remote devices and will only show in red on the window where you typed it, preventing spammers from spreading their messages. Now, if you're having trouble getting this to work, check out my complete code using the URL shown here on this slide to check that you've got all the code copied correctly. So congratulations, you've just completed using your very first natural language processing model in a full end-to-end -end web app. Try it out and test it on a variety of comments and you may notice that some things still get through or incorrectly marked as spam. Also note that the current code does not deal with words longer than 19 words. You may want to add some extra logic for that. Now, to refine the accuracy of the pre-made comment spam model, you would need to retrain it using your own custom data in addition to the original data that it was trained on. In the next section, you will learn exactly how to do that. See you there. <laughs>